One Zambia, One Nation, you are watching the news. I am your presenter, Henry Himonde. Let's take a look at the top stories in our news. Mamba Coraries to expand thermal power plant. Government laments low standards in the nursing profession. Farmers urge to engage in crop diversification. And under 23 football team off to Niger. The news in detail. Mamba Coraries Limited has announced that the company has identified land for expansion of its thermal plant. Chief Executive Officer Cyrus Minuala says once the thermal plant is expanded, it will increase production from the current to from the current 300 to 600 megawatts. Chitalu Tembo now reports. The Mamba Colliery is limited in Sinazongo district in southern province, remains one of the largest contributors to the country's power generation. The company, which is currently running on 300 megawatts, is now planning on expanding its thermal plant in order to increase its power generation to 600 megawatts. MCL Chief Executive Officer Cyrus Minuala says the mining company has already identified land for the expansion works. The transmission line which uh, evacuates power from the power plant to the substation, which is uh, approximately a 46 uh, kilometer power, uh, transmission line, that has capacity to take uh, 600 uh, megawatt uh, evacuation load. And uh, there are other uh, ancillaries which are already in place. However, the heart of the power plant is the boiler turbine and generator, which is not in place. But we have identified and kept vacant land for that purpose. The MCL CEO has further revealed that the company has already embarked on the process of identifying the suitable machinery to be used for the expansion of the plant. He notes that once finances are made available, the company will commence works on the thermal plant. Uh, our technical uh, considerations and our back-end uh, technical work is going on at full speed. We are identifying the correct equipment, identifying the correct type of machinery. The Mamba Color is Limited is optimistic that once the expansion of the plant is actualized, it will attract more business growth and prosperity for the people of Zambia. And therefore, this 300 and in future 600 would constitute an extremely important stable uh, base load, which I think, in my opinion, is very critical for the growth and prosperity of Zambia. Because this availability of electricity will attract investors, will attract business, will attract manufacturing. Shitalu Tembo reporting for Zanis in Lusaka. Now to Mchinga province where the Energy Regulation Board ERB has raised concern over the rampant increase in illegal sale of petroleum products. ERB Northern Region Senior Manager Nkusu Wila Silomba says the sale of petroleum products illegally, especially around Chinsali Business District, poses poses great danger to the general public. Mr. Silomba lamented that the vice has been on the rise and has prompted ERB to engage security wings to help keep the illegal act. They have embarked on a sensitization and engagement campaign with the general public on energy and the functions of their organizations. The Energy Regulation Board, ERB, partnered with the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, CCPC, in Chinsali District to interact with the public on various energy and consumer-related issues. During the engagement, where CCPC also commemorated their World Consumer Rights Day, ERB management in Mchinga province raised concerns over the increase of illegal fuel vendors. Selling of uh, petroleum product by unlicensed entities is an illegality. So one of the things that we do is obviously we, we want to raise awareness to first aid to the customers to say if you are not uh, buying that product, 
there will be no seller because then there will be no buyer. So we urge the consumers to say desist from buying from uh, unlicensed uh, facilities. And CCPC Provincial Investigator Bigno Tumziamba stressed on the importance of equipping consumers with information on issues of energy. We have concerns of availability of certain energy products that we are promoting here. We are bringing out this information to you. Therefore, do not be worried about certain concerns or constraints that are available at the moment. Some residents of Chinsali have appreciated this move. The 2023 World Consumer Rights Day was being commemorated under the theme Empowering Consumers Through Clean Energy Transitions. Henry Nova Jr. Zanis in Chinsali, Muchinga Province. In Southern Province, our staffer Lemi Ricando reports that residents of Livuyu compound in Livingston have called for the urgent maintenance of the footbridge in the area that is posing a threat to people's lives. They expressed concern that the bridge that connects the two densely populated Livuyu and Linda compounds has damaged portions which could lead to loss of life. Take a look at this report. A cross-section of residents in Liwuyu compound of Livingston City have called for urgent maintenance of the Liwuyu footbridge. The concerned residents have made a passionate appeal to relevant government authorities to consider working on the bridge that connects Liwuyu and Linda compounds. They fear that people use the bridge, especially school-going children, may hurt themselves in the process if nothing is done to the bridge that is almost collapsing. This is my first time to pass on this bridge. I've just been hearing about this bridge. Please, we ask for the government to help us. Because this bridge, it has been here for a long time, since I don't know. So, and for those who are used, uh, for them it's okay, but for us who are new here, it's uh, a difficult thing. I think uh, this bridge needs an urgent uh, preparation or renovation because according to the state on which it is, school children cannot be able to cross this bridge well. Like those who are still in grade 3, grade 1, they cannot pass and cross this bridge very well. Bridge that I'm buying for Zambia, so when I go to Turanga, I go. When I'm planning, I go all over. Any time to do Baji, to Mbia. Yeah, yeah. So when I go to Turanga, I go. Lemli Kando, reporting for Zanis in Livingston. In Health News, Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Technical Services, Lakson Kasonga has expressed concern over the low standards in the nursing profession. Professor Kasonka notes that the market is saturated with institutions whose number of students is beyond their staffing and infrastructure capacity, a situation which he says compro compromises the quality of training. Still in health news, government has encouraged communities in northern province to take advantage of the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, to construct maternity wings and provide water facilities in public places. Provincial Permanent Secretary Bernard Dimpundu explained that government has increased CDF allocation to ensure that communities undertake developmental projects in their localities. The Permanent Secretary said this shortly after visiting health centers in Mbala district. Details in this report by Geoffrey Piri. The increase in Constituents Development Fund CDF allocation from 1.6 million kwacha in 2021 to 27.5 million kwacha in 2022 and 28.3 million kwacha this year has opened opportunities for communities to develop their areas. Local authorities are expected to use part of the funds to support projects in communities that will help to improve lives of people. Northern Province Permanent Secretary who visited some health facilities in Mbala, which are supported by World Vision, has aged communities to apply for funding under CDF to improve facilities. I call upon the communities in Northern Province, in various districts and constituencies, those uh, health institutions where we do not have maternity annex, money is available. 
at a constituency level to answer to that challenge. Rush to the council. Go and apply under CDF. There's a component of water because we want to achieve that. World Vision in Imbala explained the developments it has undertaken to improve public facilities. Mothers deliver in a safe environment, children are safe when they are born in the environment. So the, the issue of mothers and children being safe and also ensuring that no child should, should die when at the time of giving, even the mother at the time of giving birth. So that is our focus. Meanwhile, Mbala District Commissioner encouraged women to deliver in health facilities. <laughs> Geoffrey Pizzi, reporting for Zanis in Mbala District. Visiting World Bank Executive Director from the Africa Group 1 office, Floribet Nguruko, is in the country for a familiarization tour of World Bank funded projects. One of the projects visited is the 47,000 United States dollars project under the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry on value addition of indigenous wild fruits. Details in this report. This is Forest Africa, a company adding value to the local wild fruits, such as mawuyu, ngai, musekese, by making drinks, wines, jam, milk, oil, and briquettes. The company started in 2017 after securing over 47,000 United States dollars from the World Bank through the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project. Visiting World Bank Executive Director for Africa Group 1, visited the company to appreciate its operations. This project has been contributing to the national agenda. We had the seventh uh, national development plan, which just expired uh, a few months ago. And now we have the eighth national development plan, which is in existence and the ZATIP still uh, remains um, uh, relevant to achieving some of the objectives of the agenda, national agenda. Forest Africa is a company that has also created alternative livelihoods for over 120 households that supply fruits. We are creating some resilience okay, in those rural communities and the numbers have been adequately mentioned uh, by Mr. Mackay. So we are very happy uh, to run and operate such a subsector, such a value chain that we believe uh, squarely responds to critical sustainable development goals, either job creation, We've got employees here. Either uh, poverty reduction, as we've mentioned, in the rural communities, with regards to the numbers that we are talking about, all we are hopeful is that with the sort of support that we've received this far, we can now scale up. And the executive director had some business tips for the company. So you need to have some time to observe yes. uh, what will be picked by the market. Because yes. when you do things like this, mm -hmm. some may not find the new market mm. and in the end you will scale up what uh, is um, uh, being uh, demanded to, to, to a large scale. Yes, you yes. don't produce everything at the same time. Yeah. As the country is making strides to promote value addition, such initiatives can go a long way towards achieving the purpose. Michelle Olubinda Fozanis in Chilanga. And in Agricultural News, Community Technology Development Trust CTDT says there is need to encourage farmers to actively engage in crop diversification. CTDT Seed Production and Marketing Officer Joseph Mwitumwa says the promotion of crop diversification is key in enhancing food security and nutrition at household level. Mr. Mwitumwa explained that with the uncertainty of rainfall patterns, Farmers are encouraged to plant diverse crops as a means of climate adaptation. Here's a report. The harsh reality of climate change has posed a huge threat on the country's food security. Extreme weather changes have contributed to increased and in some cases reduced rainfall, thereby affecting farmers who largely depend on rain-fed agricultural production. In order to overcome challenges associated with uncertainty, 
of Rainfall Patterns, a non-government organization called Community Technology Development Trust, CTDT, has embarked on a program that seeks to encourage farmers to venture into crop diversification as a means of climate adaptation. The Soaring Diversity is Equal to Harvesting Security is a pilot project that we are implementing in Shigurunji and Shikankata districts. And the project aims at improving uh, the availability of seed as well as the accessibility of not only improved but as well as local and the indigenous seed in these communities where we operate in. Farmers are happy with the benefits they are deriving from crop diversification. <laughs> The only thing we have to do now is to go back uh, more special when it comes to water for crops we should plant. We should not uh, stick to maize. We should plant uh, uh, crops which are uh, drought resistant, like uh, Zembe, uh, Maira, uh, Cassava. Family Napunzi, the good CDT. Natia anakula manje niambe kujikulima diversity vivili vivishango vyo siya na siyana. So chino chaka narima vili 21 vishango vyo siya na siyana. Diversity ubuino wake ni wakuti kukankala mvula ya chepa. China anguji shango chamene unashanga chikonza kukupasa chamene ji sijifu na manzi. It is pleasing that non-government organizations such as CTDT have joined hands with government in promoting crop diversification as a means of fighting climate change. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. Also in the news, GIZ Zambia says the Food and Nutrition Security Enhanced Resilience Program, which is aimed at addressing the challenges of poor nutrition in rural parts of Zambia, is yielding positive results in Wapula province. Here are the details. The inadequacy of food diversity in Wapula province has led to the insufficient micronutrient intake for the vast majority of the rural population, which largely depends on subsistence agriculture, most in the production of maize and cassava. According to the 2018 Zeme Demographic Health Survey, stunting levels in Wapula province are at 45%, surpassing the national average of 34.2% among children under the age of two. However, the Global Program Food and Nutrition Security Enhanced Resilience, FANZA, which has been implemented in selected districts in Wapula province by JZ Zambia, is changing the narrative in addressing the challenge of stunting and nutrition. So we are very proud. When we did our first surveys and we can see that all the measures, all the joint effort actually yields results. And that is why we do what we do. I mean, at the end of the day, we want a better tomorrow for all the, the people of Luapula. We have been implementing now for three years in Luapula. This period, we were able to improve the nutrition indicators for women and for children. We can see that a more diverse diet is being consumed by our beneficiaries. And also on the WASH indicators, all of them have improved. Meanwhile, Lopula Province Permanent Secretary Mait Mumba has thanked cooperating partners for upscaling nutrition interventions in the province. We are delighted to have our support from our cooperating partners in seven out of 12 districts aimed at supplementing government efforts in the upscaling nutrition interventions. The provincial administration will continue to partner with would be stakeholders and advocate for acceleration of nutrition program implementation across the province. GIZ Zambia and other cooperating partners have held a two day FANSA sustainability workshop in Mansa district for Kawambwa, Monsawambwa, and Mwense districts where the project is being implemented. Chipini Makasa, Zanis, Mansa district. The news continues. President Haga Inde Hijilema is tomorrow expected in Mbala district in northern province to grace the induction parade of the Zambia Army Special Forces. Provincial Minister Leonard Mbao says the president, who is also commander-in-chief of the armed forces, will also witness some demonstrations by the special forces operators. Mkweto Mumba now reports. 
President Haka in the Hichilema will tomorrow grace the induction parade of the Zambia Army Special Forces in Imbala District. Northern Province Minister Lena Dimbao has announced that the president, who is also commander-in-chief of the Defense Forces, is expected to arrive at Zaf Samora Marshall Airport around 08.30 hours. I wish to confirm uh, on behalf of the, the provincial administration, Northern Province, uh, the coming of His Excellency, the President uh, of the Republic of Zambia, uh, who will be uh, officiating at the induction parade uh, of the Special Forces in Imbala, which will take place tomorrow. The President is expected uh, to arrive in Imbala at around 8.30, and uh, uh, we expect uh, the President to, to fly back to Osaka uh, immediately after uh, the event. The special forces operators have been undergoing advanced military training in line with their mandates to defend the country. Special forces are a force multiplier because by air, by land, by sea, they are able to carry out any task assigned to them. And therefore, their training is unique because they are the front runners and the rest of the defense force comes in to complete the task assigned to the Defense Force. President Hichilema will also witness some demonstrations by the Special Forces operators and will leave for Lusaka immediately after the military function. Nkweto Mumba for Zanis in Kasama. In sports news, a national team coach Avram Grant says he does know what is happening to Inter Miami defender I'm Mavika, but is, however, has however clarified that the player is part of his football plans. Grant is hopeful that the formalization process for Mavika will be ready before the match between Zambia and Lesotho takes place in the 2023 Ivory Coast Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. On Thursday next week, Zambia will host Lesotho in the first leg encounter at Levi Mwanawasa Stadium in Dola, and the team is three days later expected to proceed to South Africa for the return fixture. Grant has noted that Mavika is a good player and everyone is looking forward to him donning Chipolopolo colors. Last week, Minister of Sports Elvis Nkandu announced that Mavika was cleared and issued with a Zambian passport. And finally, in the news, the Zambia Under-23 national team has traveled to Neme to face Niger in an international friendly before the Total Energies Under-23 AFCON final round first leg qualifier against Egypt. The team left Kenneth Kaunda International Airport in Lusaka aboard Ethiopian Airways. Oswald Mtapa, the Oswald Mtapa led team will face Niger on Friday in a friendly that will see both sides prepare for their final round qualifier against Egypt, Egypt and Sudan respectively. Speaking shortly before departure, midfielder Prince Mumba said the team will approach the match for a convincing win to boost confidence for the game against Egypt. Mumba said the team is aiming to bring back glory to the country by competing with top teams and getting positive results. Zambia will be away to Egypt for the first leg at the Air Defense Stadium on March 22nd before hosting the Young Pharaohs at Levi Monawasa Stadium on March 26th, 2023. <music> That sports item brings us to the end of the news, but before we go away, another look at the top stories in our news. Mamba Coraries to expand thermal power plant. Government laments low standards in the nursing profession. Farmers urge to engage in crop diversification. and under-23 football team off to Niger. Thank you so much for watching the news on behalf of the entire production crew. My name is Henry Himonde. Remember, we are one Zambia, one nation. Until next time, it's goodbye.